hello again. So I needed a macro lens and I decided to test a bunch of them, as you can see. Um, at the same time, I only intended to test the um, Canon, Nikon and Zeiss, but that came along and this is now on the camera as well because that is a rough shape one and I got a better one for myself uh, after conducting all these tests. Plus, I have the uh, my previously favorite Zeiss 21mm 2.8, but that's for another day because I will do another test for wide angle comparison. This is solely for best macro lens for the money for the um, Blackmagic 6K or any Super 35 within the budget. So first and foremost, why I chose this range of 35, 40 and 50 mil. For myself, I find that macro is not necessarily need to be super, super, super up close. I really would like to get as much environment or background as possible. And if I could, to be honest, I would have as wide of a lens as possible for macro shots, which actually again, this this lens, this this um, 21 mil focuses closer than this uh, 17 to 55 um, crop zoom lens, but um, but it doesn't quite fit the bill in terms of versatility. And uh, my soon upcoming trip is what's actually made me thinking I don't want to be on a trip and swapping lenses, so I opted for a zoom lens, but at the same time, it was a good test to see how they stack up to each other. In terms of the price, uh, it depends what country you are in, but overall I would say they all about the same, uh, between 200 and 400 dollars or 200 and 400 pounds, uh, depends where you're buying. Zeiss being one of the most expensive ones, um, I believe I paid exactly 400 where a good mint condition one of these is about 360 or so. So uh, and these two come in about two 300 each. Um, Nikon 40 mil being the cheapest out of them. And out of all of them, uh, the actually Canon 35 2.8 and the Nikon um, 40 mil 2.8 is the only true one-to-one -one macros. Uh, this is by no means a macro lens at all. Uh, it's just a zoom lens that can uh, double as a close detailed shot lens. Um, but in reality, and, and Zeiss is a pretend macro lens, I like to call it, because uh, it does do super, super close focus, uh, but it's not technically one-to-one -one marker. In terms of the build quality, I had to give it to Nikon, the um, zoom lens. Overall, if you're traveling somewhere where is uh, unpredictable weather or uh, potential for ingress of any kind, um, this is the best lens. That said, it does have a drawback of extending um, when you go throughout the zoom range. So that is potentially where things could get in, but it is weather sealed. It is proper, proper weather sealed and even has a gasket on a, on a mount. Zeiss, uh, it feels the most premium, although Nikon is better built, but it's using polycarbonate uh, shell um, that doesn't really match the, the feel of proper, proper metal. Um, that said, in terms of weatherproofness, this is probably the worst case scenario. This is like, look how much it extends when you are focusing it. Uh, definitely not, not something you would like to take it in a wet weather or somewhere where dust could go in because you have additional one extra point where stuff can get in and um, yep, no, no gasket uh, for mount. So there you go. But it does feel the most premium just because it's heavy and dense. Um, and I think sometimes a smaller lens, if it's equal or similar weight to a bigger lens, it will feel more premium if it's smaller. Um, it's similar thing like with the watches, I guess. Um, if you have a heavy metal watch, it will feel more premium than something that's not, although it doesn't really indicate whether the item is actually more expensive or not. Now, in terms of the other two, um, the Nikon 40mm, uh, 
it does have a gasket at the mount, um, but it does extend uh, when you're focusing it, and uh, I think that could be a potential failure point. But being the cheapest lens out of the bunch, uh, you can buy two of these for the price of each one of those. So uh, I don't know. I don't really expect too much from it. In my experience, um, using the later generation uh, Nikon lenses, they can sometimes feel once you pick it up, feels a bit cheap, but it does look like it's constructed from extremely high quality plastic. Um, and I am yet to have one that would get some dirt or, or, or water through and cause problems. So that's just my experience. And finally, the um, Canon 35 2.8 stabilized and actually it does have this ring that actually um, lights up if you need it to. Although uh, quality of light is horrible and the direction is really not what you would ever want to use, I don't know. But if you are in complete darkness, I guess, that's better than nothing. Um, and it has this optional hood, I was lucky, I guess, uh, when I bought it used. All of them I bought used, uh, none of them I bought new. Um, it looks pretty similar to Nikon, minus, yeah, minus the gasket at the top, at the bottom. So you can't... Uh, well, it does look like it has more electronics in it, uh, which I don't know if it's the best thing. Um, the other reason why I actually go with Nikon lenses um, instead of Canon normally is uh, what Nikon has, or lenses that design for Nikon mount, what they do have is um, they have a manually operated aperture regardless of what generation apart from the latest generation i think the very latest generation you don't have anymore the mechanical switch to uh to adjust the the aperture but uh but previous uh, up, anything up to just before the z lineup uh of cameras that came out nikon had this feature where it's a uh, fully mechanically operated lens um I find it very useful. One less thing to fail on a field, I guess. Uh, I guess I'm just being old school or just being old. So that pretty much covers the uh, build quality. And actually I should have probably spoken a bit more about the ergonomics of using those lenses. And out of all, the Zeiss is the nicest one to use. Uh, is the most closest one to resembling a proper cinema lens. Um, the focusing of all the Zeiss lenses I had, this era of Zeiss lenses, the Distagons and the Planars, uh, I found that uh, the ring is so fantastically smooth, so nice. But at the same time, I saw a lot of um, Chinese cheaper alternatives like Mikey and other kinds of uh, new players on the, on the market. They all started doing the same thing. I guess it's just a special type of grease that they use uh, for fully uh, manual lenses, so that's pretty cool, I guess. Uh, although it's not a deal breaker for me, I, f I, I realized that I don't really do that much rack focusing. Um, and if I do, it's more like a whip rack, so it's really fast. So, um, and if you watch in cinema, very rarely you will see, um, or not very rarely, it's not as often as some people make out, make out of it. Uh, the, the, the rack focusing in terms of the entire film if you're watching it um, so I can live without it actually and the second place would go for Canon of all lenses actually I found the ring to be completely loose in terms of movement but um, it's not sticking at all it's not resisting where Nikon what can happen is when you're focusing it it doesn't it's like it has this it doesn't have like, it's not too smooth, but it's not, it, it doesn't have consistent resistance. It's really, really not great. Even for the zoom, it's a bit more loose, but um, but it's, it's, I would say almost on par with, uh, with Canon, um, but nowhere near as good as the proper cinema lenses or, uh, or, or Zeiss in this case. Another point in terms of, uh, built of the lenses they are their apertures are slightly different nikon has a very nicely curved 
nine blade aperture uh, Zeiss supposedly curved but it does get quite straight after f5.6 also nine bladed aperture um, then the uh, 40 mil um, Nikon is seven blade very nicely rounded as well aperture and the um, Canon I believe is eight bladed uh, also very nicely rounded aperture one fun fact is once you disconnect or disengage these lenses from the body um, the Nikon tends to um, close up the aperture because of the, the, the lever at the back once you let it go it just ba goes back into um, close mode where um, Canon because it's fully electronically operated it's just stays fully open um, and Zeiss because it's a fully fully mechanical uh, it, what you left it it stays at that setting and because of that aperture design there are very minute nuanced um, differences between them so in terms of these two Canon 35 and Nikon 40 they're almost identical, indistinguishable. Uh, very nice uh, bokeh, uh, nothing to complain really. Perfectly clean, very nice, if that's what you are aiming for. Um, now the um, Nikon zoom lens has quite a bit of onion ringing happening in, uh, in its bokeh and if you go through different um, zoom ranges from 55 down to 17 it actually looks like it's almost closing in the aperture at some points although the light it doesn't change but again because there is so many elements are floating um, so it does create somewhat busier potentially background but I'm measuring this at a very synthetic lab environment so which with just using these fairy lights uh, at the background and then analyzing the bokeh balls by one but in reality when you're using these lenses um, out in a field, if you are, if, if you were, um, the difference will be imperceivable, to be honest. So uh, it's not that big of a deal as some people make out of it, but it's still nice to know. Um, and I would say Zeiss has an interesting one going because um, because of that design, uh, where a lot of stuff can go in. I think a lot of stuff does go in and uh, I actually spotted on these um, bokeh balls um, a few specs that will identify that it's either something on a piece of glass somewhere or right next to the blade. So there you go, that's something to consider I guess. But people buying Zeiss or old vintage lenses, they actually don't want that image to be as perfect as these three would provide. Fun fact actually, this is the most expensive lens out of the three, but all of those three surpasses that lens in terms of image quality. And when I say image quality, I actually refer to actual image quality, not um, what aesthetically looks nicer. Um, purely based on resolution, micro contrast, flaring, these three actually beats it out. But it's different reasons why people buy this. And I think majority is just hype to be honest um second being for myself if i would consider that which i still contemplate that maybe i should keep it but um it's the usability it's it's really really nice to use them on the set or whatever but if your goal is to have a 6k camera and equip it with a lens that will be able to resolve that 6k battery died again i need to really actually resolve that issue with um microphone buzzing need to figure out maybe a, a v-mount battery or something anyway so um yeah as i mentioned before if you are buying a 6k camera and you're wanting to um equip it with the lens that would resolve 6k um old manual lenses are really not the way to go i would go with some of the modern lenses but then again this is a different reason why people buy these lenses for and hopefully i answered the question by now why and that pretty much summarizes what I, my thoughts are and what were the testing uh, results from analyzing all four lenses um, personally I I need to adapt again to um, working with the uh, with the sharper lenses because uh, it's it's very different um, and actually it's almost off-putting because when I look at the footage that I've shot 
with the um, Zeiss uh, 21 millimeters. Maybe because I already done a lot of work with it, it just almost instantly looks cinematic. Uh, and when I say cinematic, I refer to picture looking really painterly like. Um, with this, I <laughs> I still have uh, I still have ways to go until I get to that point um, because with that lens, as you can probably see, everything is sharp, and I have a filter that uh, reduces the um, highlight uh, harshness uh, on it, the promised. Um, but still, with it, um, everything does look sharp. But I realize I need to really um, work on my lighting and the uh, workflow, post-processing workflow in Resolve to match it because I am almost there and hopefully by the time I post it, it will be a good indication that I'm getting there slowly. Um, because I ultimately would still prefer having the option of having the absolute sharpest image possible. And if I need to dirty it up, I can with the help of uh, some filters and whatnot. Um, but the things are the things that I cannot work out and I probably won't uh, at all is the bokeh, uh, which is again characteristics of the uh, zoom lens design rather than uh, rather than the actually Nikon versus Zeiss or anything. I think if you if Zeiss does have zoom lenses. They do have, they used to have, I don't know if they still do, but um, would be interesting to see how their bokeh looks compared to that. But again, this is just the synthetic results. I'm not talking about real world and so far using in real world, this is fantastic. This is really fitting my bill. And currently it is replacing the whole bunch of uh, lenses I own. And that's the thing. I want to focus more on creating the material, you know, and, and working on my lighting rather than thinking of switching lenses, which lens and carrying the lenses and all that. I'm trying to actually streamline and minimalize uh, my uh, my setup as much as possible. I, If I could, I would work with just one light. I have two small lights and it goes similar to my audio setup. I'm still rocking the uh, P170, which is just up the shot right there and uh, hopefully it sounds decent. We'll see. I changed the position because I saw how a uh, fellow from Dark Corner uh, did it in his videos and I've, I found I like it a lot more than when it was pointing from there and plus we have a new friend, new plant, so always good to have more plants. And I almost forgot the um, image stabilization feature in the Canon lens is nice to have if you do a lot of handheld. I think it still looks more natural than the gimbal footage. But uh, for my type of work, where it's either on the tripod or on the gimbal, it's pretty much useless. So there you go. Combined with the, my review and uh, hopefully the test results that I'll post uh, either in between the shots or at the very end, um, you can make up your mind what's best for you. All great choices. Uh, not a single one performs really bad in whatever area you may uh, be concerned with. Um, that said, I would just say again, this is great lens if you are not worried about resolution and if you only care about the uh, absolutely most filmic look that you can get straight away out of the out of the uh, footage or the lens. Um, I would say yeah, that's hundred percent. And if you are doing a lot of rack focusing and you are uh, or you have follow focus system none of these would work because they don't have hard stops this one does um, and uh, that's pretty much it i feel like i rushed through them uh, as usual but uh, when it comes to editing it takes freaking days to to finish it so hopefully if you are considering any of these lenses uh, this shines some light on your potential decision in the future i will make another video soon about this versus that and uh, we'll see how they stack up but I already tested to be honest and I know exactly how they stack up um, very similar points that apply to this versus that goes to this as well um, but I must say this is the nicest most compact 
nicest lens I've ever owned in terms of uh, actually using it. Uh, fully manual, but so small. Um, it's just, I don't know what it's about. It's, it, it really is nice, it's nice. And I'm actually thinking maybe I'm not gonna get rid of it just yet. Um, time will tell. Cool, that's about it from me. And I will see you in the next video. Bye. One, two, one, two, testing, testing.